Our next speaker today is Dr. Rita Colwell. Dr. Colwell is um, the Gomery Research Board Chair and a nationally respected scientist and educator. Uh, she will be speaking about the beginnings of Gomery. Dr. Colwell, go right ahead. Thank you, Monica. <clears throat> and thank you for the very, I think, uh, well-deserved overview for Sea Grant, uh, Dr. Pennant. Uh, it's amazing to think that it's 40 plus years that it's been operating highly successfully. And for today's uh, event, I'd first like to thank um, Dr. Sherry Larkin, the director of the Florida Sea Grant Program for hosting the event. And Monica, I'd like to thank you for organizing this really wonderful event. Gomery has had a, a tremendous partnership with all of the Gulf of Mexico Sea Grant programs. And, and we thank them all for the leadership in the areas of outreach and communication. The, really the critical parts of the study is making sure the public understands what we are doing and what we have been doing. So I, I'd like to provide some, some brief context and uh, history of the, of the Gulf Research Initiative. <clears throat> if I may have the next slide. First of all, I think it's really very important and fitting that we always remember those who perished in this terrible disaster. You see the names on the slide. They represent friends, colleagues, uh, workers in the Gulf who gave their lives. For them, we thank the sacrifice. And then I'm really, really sad to say that um, we must offer our sincere and heartfelt condol condolences for the loss of one of our really great researchers, Dr. David Hollander, who was supposed to be part of this gathering and passed away recently. David was a cheerful, wonderful person to work with. I, I genuinely have enjoyed learning to meet and know about him, and I will indeed miss him. Now, if I may um, go on to some of the uh, Deep Horizon contributions. About a month <clears throat> into the spill, BP made a commitment of $500 million to fund research over a 10 year period. This was to be focused on the deep water horizon oil spill and all that went with it. The commitment was unrelated to the criminal penalty and um, the natural resource damage assessment fines that they would pay subsequently. At the time I was asked by, in an innocent telephone call, I was asked by BP's uh, chief science officer, Ellen Williams, um, to lead a board of prominent scientists and university administrators to guide the Gomery investment into the best available research. The directions from BP were pretty direct and simple. Operate under a clear mission statement and fund science across five theme areas. Uh, as a board, we began formal activities in late 2010, and basically we had to build a program from scratch. We formed various committees that uh, guided us in the decision-making, and the committees were, I think, the very appropriate ones of ethics, outreach, proposal solicitation, proposal review, data management, and other areas that would come up in the course of the decade. We had to build a management team to handle the request and review of proposals, uh, to cover the contract development, uh, to implement uh, the work, and obviously to do um, <clears throat> very strong fiscal oversight um, under GOMA and the Consortium uh, for Ocean Leadership. Uh, we hired a chief science officer. You'll hear from, from our, the man I consider my hero shortly. Now the next slide, the, uh, <clears throat> the research themes are the five specific areas uh, where the research board was uh, to encourage the best scientific research. These areas have been the focus of our investment, the investment in science, and the research board ran six open competitions, um, requests for proposals. These were soliciting proposals um, 
in all of the five areas. Uh, we solicited peer reviews from the uh, field experts. Um, this, the whole program was modeled after the NSF and um, the National Academy of Sciences, specifically the rules of conduct of carrying out science as promulgated to the National Academy uh, reports. The funding went to institutions across the Gulf, including Florida. These were the themes that were logical, physical distribution of the oil dissolution, chemical evolution and biological degradation, environmental effects um, of the oil on the seafloor, the water column, coastal waters. And this was a unique spill in that it involved some very deep water areas, title of course, deep, deep water horizon and the technology developments to, to improve response and mitigation. And then the area that we had the most difficulty gathering um, proposals was public health. And as, we, as it turned out, it was because um, we were essentially uh, establishing a new discipline of environmental public health. And I'm very happy to say that it is being carried on through the work of um, uh, our board men member um, from, the, from Florida and um, also from uh, colleagues. Um, and we'll hear more about that in a moment. So have the next slide, please. I guess all good things must come to an end. We're coming to the end of our program. Over the past 10 years and through six really competitive RFPs, the research board awarded $420 million, and please note that because it represents the full bulk of the funding went out to research to scientists around the world, but focused on the Gulf of Mexico and the Gulf of Mexico scientists. Those investments led to a huge uptick in publications, um, publications about oil spill and uh, related science and also about general science about the Gulf of Mexico, because that's how we can understand better the effects. I don't have time to go into all the details because that would take probably two or three days in itself. But please note that really strong upward tick in publications, uh, getting close to 1500 peer reviewed publications of the work um, from the Gulf of Mexico Research Initiative. Um, a good metric of, um, of what we accomplished. We have the next slide, please. <coughs> now the previous slide um, reflects the huge amount of information to digest, but, but the good news is that we are putting together a synthesis of the efforts. In other words, rather than um, putting out 1,500 publications and then saying we've done our job, in fact, what we've done is go back and pull together um, all of the publications, the findings, the research discoveries um, across the major areas of uh, synthesis, the core areas of the research that we were carrying out. We've already had about 30 publications from the synthesis uh, and there's a lot more to follow. And, and I'm pleased to say that Sea Grant will bring the summaries of the syntheses to the communities and to all of you over the next year or two. But you can see from the core areas, the plume circulation observations and modeling, fate of oil and weathering, Ecology, critical, ecology and ecosystem, human health and socioeconomic impacts, and then the ecosystem services, human health and socioeconomic impacts tied together. Obviously, as microbiologists, uh, we would have to have um, microbiology, metagenomics, and informatics synthesized, and we've done a lot of work in that area. And then integrating the whole lot through uh, modeling and um, and then the outreach, uh, the knowledge exchanged, and then of course, um, what is turning out to be a really continuing discussion, and rightfully, 
is uh, the, the dispersant related research findings. So the synthesis goal is to document and exploit the scientific achievements, the advances, with the idea that the synthesis itself is going to lead to new discoveries because it is the foundation of what we know and have learned and then on which we can build the next steps going forward. Uh, the products of synthesis will be um, available on the website, which will continue incidentally for another decade. So may I have the next slide? I'd like to highlight another very important uh, resource. We established an extremely important data archival system, and that system houses all of the GOMRI uh, data. Uh, we call it the GRID-C. Um, in support of transparency and making sure that science and education uh, was right out in front of the commu community at large, BP uh, made uh, a very strong statement and requirement that, uh, an expectation, I would say, not a requirement, that all the data collected from the Gomri research would be made publicly available. And so we spent a lot of money, uh, significant resources, to make that happen. Um, participation was not optional. Uh, and I must say, compliance has been really, really good. The data are preserved and they're available, well, at least through 2030, but I suspect well into the future uh, because the data are not just deposited, they're deposited in an actionable format. In other words, to be used, not just to be um, uh, stored and left for posterity, to be used by posterity. So let me now uh, speak a bit about a very significant amount of funding that, and uh, very significant portion of the research, and that was public outreach. All of these products will also be part of our legacy as we go forward, and we hope that they will be used, that you all will use them uh, as, we, um, as you go into your research over the next decade or two. The research consortium have developed uh, extensive websites, and these include a variety of very useful educational products. Um, we're, we're really making sure that these will continue well into the future. We produced three documentaries, Journey to Planet Earth, and um, a number of associated podcasts um, that uh, will continue on uh, on YouTube well past um, uh, Gomri. Um, we organized and were very active in guiding the Gulf of Mexico oil spill conference, uh, the Ecosystems uh, Sciences conferences, and Laura Bowie will tell you uh, more about those and it, their future. Uh, we um, have collaborated with the Smithsonian um, Museum of Natural History's Ocean Portal and they have highlighted our scientific findings that will be preserved at their website. Um, so I think we've, we're going to leave behind an extraordinary record of um, those of you who participated and the results that you provided and the guidance through synthesis for the future. We have the next slide, please. We've really been very delighted with the outreach activities and making information available to communities, to resource managers, and to the local government. Um, Seaground has produced a variety of brochures. Some of them you can see here. Uh, this is in response to public questions. The public really wanted to know what was happening, what had happened, what was happening, what would be happening in the future. And so there were webinars, seminars to educate the community about marine oil spills that um, will continue with the Sea Ground Network well into the future. And as I mentioned, these final, uh, the final activities, they're really to convey the synthesis activities through these outreach tools. Now we have the next slide. I'd like to um, bring to your attention the three uh, documentary series, Dispatches from the Gulf. They're available for free. 
I'm sure Monica can provide the link and they're available for streaming uh, on YouTube. I think it's important to mention that the effort here was to convey to the public how the science is done and to show <clears throat> and to introduce to those who are doing the science. There are individuals, humans, just like the rest of us, interested in science. And um, I think the, the dispatches from the Gulf have done a lot to communicate and to humanize the research that we've done. So I thank you very much. We'll, all of us will be happy to answer any questions you have, uh, but I really want to make sure you see the research board and all of them were fantastic um, contributors. Really, I have to say, <clears throat> what you see before you is the Gomri research family. We really, I think, consider ourselves a family and colleagues. And I'd like to personally acknowledge and thank the wonderful team, the university, scientists, the administrators, the research board uh, that made this wonderful program a reality. And I'd like to thank the 5,000 people who participated in the Gulf of Mexico Research Initiative. And I'd especially like to thank Dr. Bill Hogarth and Dr. Dick Dodge for their terrific contributions to the Gomri program. And I would also like to um, make sure that Bert Singer gets um, a shout out um, for his work on the public health aspects. And I'd also like to pay respects to the late Cyril Sumea, um, who passed away um, as we were working through the Gulf of Mexico Research Initiative. I think you can tell from these personal statements and call outs that we really have worked collaboratively and successfully as a family, as a team, as colleagues. And I think we'll stay that way long, long into the future.